What is up guys, Rick is here with a new video and today is the last day, the last hours of the ALSA raid up. And this of course means that once ALSA is gone, is no longer in the raid up, she will go to all the recruitment and epic recruitment, making it a bit more difficult to immediately upgrade her to Supreme Plus. So it is right now a pretty good chance to summon her to Supreme Plus. But then again, of course, well, should you spend your gems, should you spend your rate up tickets for Alsa right now? Maybe it's better to wait for Soren, maybe it's better to use them for all your recruitment. I want to answer that question for you guys in this video. So right now I would say we hop into some gameplay and I'll talk a little bit about her. So I just put her in uh, against the Skyclops. She's not optimal against the Skyclops, but he's just the boss we have right now. Um, regarding her general performance, uh, she always did do pretty well. She paired well together with Carolina in our control comps. Uh, she paired well with Iron. Um, she has some very nice synergy with some other heroes, with the Burial team, which was quite fun. And overall, she is a very strong hero. One thing to note, however, she didn't really make it in a whole lot of meta teams. Uh, it's She's still a bit off meta. There are multiple reasons for this. Um, for PvE, she just didn't make the cut in most of the teams. She just wasn't good enough and wasn't useful enough. Her kit makes her a little bit difficult. Um, in PvE, in a lot of situations, we fight enemies that are very strong, that have a huge burst potential, that can uh, kill your heroes immediately, and only certain heroes like Brutus that have an innate immunity can survive in there. And that, of course, means uh, we struggle a bit if we have heroes that are squishy and um, jump into the line of the enemies. And that is sadly exactly what Alsa does. Alsa first ultimate catapults her towards the enemy team. And uh, if the enemy team is, of course, very, very strong and has a huge amount of burst, yeah, that can be quite bad. That can be quite bad. That can mean the end of your run and, well, certain death for Alsa, which is not something we generally like and not something that is pretty great and uh, a very good ability. So in those high-end PvE situations, she just wasn't very great. And um, there was nearly no way to fix this. There was a bit of a way to fix this with Rainier. If you teleported a hero from the enemy over to your side, um, then may sometimes you could just uh, set her ult to attack this enemy, keeping her in a safe or relatively safe space, and thereby negating this bad effect. Once you got the first ultimate done, and once you got behind that, and once you did that, um, her next ultimate always brings her back to her starting position. So from that point on, she is pretty safe. She is quite all right. She's quite a great hero at that point, even providing some abilities that um, lock enemies into place by placing those stones, by placing those barricades, um, which she does so in quite a smart way. Like this AI, I, I heard for some people they thought that it was bad. I, I totally don't agree with that. She tends to block enemies into corners. She tends to block enemies uh, behind those walls. She tends to block ways. And uh, using that sometimes to an extraordinary proficiency uh, where she puts herself into a position where basically no enemy can attack her and hitting enemies repeatedly from that position, which is very, very great, actually. Mm. Still, in PvE, you will often find that situation that you start an AFK stage, and we can try that right now, and I'm, uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure, honestly, that I can demonstrate that with fairly uh, big ease, because we have this team set up. This is, by the way, just a Carolina comp, uh, really, uh, with Brutus there to tank up some damage. And we will see how long she survives. I assume it won't be very long. Uh, because right now she's still uh, at the back here. We are bursting, which is nice. Now she jumps into the enemy team. And that, now our Harden died. She actually managed to get to the second ult. Nice that she now... Uh, now okay. Alright. <laughs> now that I want to show how she dies, she demonstrates me what a great hero she can be. And yeah, her damage output, that is something I didn't really talk about yet. Her damage output is quite nice. It is very, very nice, actually. She does a ton of damage, and uh, that is probably one of her best abilities, just dealing a ton of damage. And uh, as long as she does that, as long as she deals enough damage to quickly take care of the enemies, she's often rather fine. You can see how she placed that barricade here, just right between the enemies and our heroes, um, to make it difficult. But she died. She's actually the only hero other than Brutus that died in that fight. So, 
Um, we get a little, a little taste of that here, even though she, uh, well, she survived quite long, actually. This is a more tanky team, so maybe this will be better. We are a bit overleveled, I have to say. Uh, she took a hit there already, and now she's dead. So she jumped right between Iron uh, and the enemy there, so really a bit of a problem. She would rather want her to uh, stay back a little bit than to jump back from her ult every single time she did that. So uh, in that sense, she isn't really a hero that is very usable once you get towards the difficult AFK stages. You saw her boss performance, that wasn't bad at all. That was quite good boss damage um, that we saw there against the Dream Realm boss. So in that situation, also quite nice. Very, very good, actually. It's a Paragon 1 Alsa that we have here. It doesn't change much for PvE, but for PvE it's kind of quite nice. We don't have her charm skill because I was unlucky. Um, she got a decent seasonal skill as well. With the ultimate uh, buff there, she does a ton of ultimates, which is kind of nice and gives a bit of a synergy with certain artifacts. Um, because doing a lot of ultimates um, is, is rather nice. If we check out artifacts, I probably choose the, <laughs> the most annoying way to show artifacts, but that's all right. Um, after we use our ultimate every few times, we deal damage to the enemies and reduce attack speed with Star Shard spell. Very, very good. Quick Blade um, is also kind of in in interesting in that way. And we can also deal damage with... No, not Stormcaller. <laughs> um, we, with Crescent Spell for that. For Crescent Spell, she is quite good to charge up the damage for that. So also for that artifact, uh, she's kind of nice. So there is a bit of synergy with artifacts, actually, which is fairly interesting. But really, mm, she turned out to be not bad. I stand by her being a good hero, but just a bit of meta. Um, we made one PvP team that I still like around Burial. Um, a burial team where we just used burial wreaths, uh, split the enemies apart a little bit, and used Alsa to provide um, to provide barricades on the battlefield to block enemies from coming to our side, to split them apart, to activate actually the Alsa uh, the the burial ability where we summon shadows from isolated enemies to isolate the enemies by using Alsa. That was quite interesting, and I still like this team very much. We got some very interesting wins with that. But that is also that's, that's such a niche team that never got into the top meta. And she couldn't really establish her way into the Iron team as well. So, I mean, overall, you can already hear it. She isn't really top notch. She isn't the hero you want to summon if you are in the early game. If you're deciding on who should be my first Supreme Plus hero. Well, it's not Alsa. It's not Alsa. It is Odie, really, to be honest. It is Odie. Odie or Sessia, both are fine. Probably it will be Odie. Odie is uh, a great choice, and you won't get him through rate up summons. You want to go for all to all hero recruitment and epic recruitment for that. So, um, yeah, Alsa, not really it. What about the combination with Soren and on the later account? Well, if you have a ton of heroes, if you have your Odie, if you have your Iron, if you have your Carolina, if you maybe even have your Florable, which probably is one of the most used rate up heroes we had right now, quite interesting. So didn't really expect that when I summoned her first. Um, and if you have those really relevant heroes for the gamers, for Dream Realm and for the AFK stages, well, then you are free to do what you want. And if you then say, okay, I want to have a hero that deals a ton of damage, that can uh, be put in a burst team and deal a ton of damage there as well, and that also summons barricades, well, maybe you want to have Alsa and maybe Alsa will be cool. And we have this situation that we'll look at right now, that... Um, Soren will have an ability to push enemies back and when they hit the, the uh, outer rim of the arena or some kind of barricade, which can be summoned by Alsa, and Alsa tends to summon a barricade close to enemies, um, that he then stuns the enemy. And so there is a synergy between those two. So if you care to summon Soren, maybe get at least a copy of Alsa so you get that ability to summon barricades. Because that could be fairly interesting. So in that situation, I recommend getting at least one copy. Uh, if you have Alsa Supreme Pl uh, Plus anyway, I uh, do want to uh, invest more to go to Paragon. Probably not. I mean, she is kind of interesting in PvP. But really, I didn't feel like I got such a big advantage from her. And she left my team later on. I actually replaced her with Damien because I just didn't need the extra damage in the Iron team. It was much better to get some extra haste going and to have some heal in there. So she was replaced by a hero that fills an entirely different role in that team. And um, so in that situation, I have to say, well, really, probably let it go past 
wait for the nine hours, check out Soren, maybe he's insane without her. Um, I would assume that even Soren doesn't really change up the meta too much and that we will likely see uh, the same meta as before, where you want to get your OD done and want to save your gems for all hero recruitment, where you will get uh, a lot of A heroes quite easily because we have the higher chance there of 22.5% uh, compared to the only 10% that we have here. So in that regard, um, we just have a ton of A heroes that are very, very important. And that is also something that I, I want to pick up from the discussion we saw on Reddit in recent days. Not only on Reddit, also on Discord, really. Mm. People were talking about how uh, the next raid up here will likely be an A tier. But really, is that bad? Like, we saw a lot of S tiers and we see the difference between A tiers and S tiers. But for me personally, I have to say, I never really saw a big performance difference between A tiers and S tiers um, in this game. We have so many great A tiers, we have so many great S tiers. I cleared a lot of campaign, if I'm looking at it, a lot of the AFK stages with Oli, who is an A tier. The best damage dealer in the game is an A tier. This is an A tier. Um, then we, we, do we uh, use as well, we used Corin, uh, Coco, an A tier. Uh, Corin, uh, an A tier. We have uh, Brutus is an S tier, actually. <laughs> we have Antandra, one of the best tanks in the game, is an A tier. Like, so many great heroes in this game are actually A tiers. Arden, an A tier, used to kill so many AFK stages. Like, it's honestly ridiculous. He's like the main damage dealer for uh, AFK stages, even ahead of, of OD, probably. I saw him in more stages, to be honest. An A tier. So really, there is no quality difference there. I, I really don't don't get the difference. It is a bit weird that we even have this difference between S and A tiers. Like for the summoning difference, okay. But quality wise, S and A tiers are, are really the same in this game, which is fairly interesting uh, and something that I probably didn't see in many games. But uh, I'm, I'm not very concerned with Soren being an A tier and being released as the rate up hero. I think in this kind of game, with the quality of A tier heroes that we saw, can be more than appropriate. I'm very hyped to summon him, actually. And I will do a live stream. Live stream right at release of Soren. You should check that out. We'll also release a video on how good Soren is. And uh, if you should summon this guy, if I may be wrong with my intention or with my with my current assessment of the situation and uh, he turns out to be very, very great, I think he will be all right. I think he will be all right. I think he won't be great. I think he won't be a must-have, but I think he will be all right. And a nice combo with, Al uh, with Alsa. But we will see that in that video. Till then, uh, I wish you a great day. Oh, before I forget it. Uh, I made a collaboration video with uh, Zebo on his channel. Maybe you want to check that out. Got, it was quite the cool discussion. We discussed a lot of topics and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. So till then, I wish you a great day. We'll see us in the next one.